Hello everyone, my name is Jenny and I am in my second week of the um, Going Through the Fire program with my consultant and this week I'm going to be talking about chapters 3, 4 and 5 which I have covered um, but I will tell you a little bit about what happened last week um, because last week I was doing chapters 1 and 2 and I learned a lot about the inner voice and I had to imagine situations um, how to kind of imagine what would happen, how I would want it to happen, um, imagining it to be a better and more positive um, experience than one that I would be rowing about. So I did actually go to the cinema and when I go to the cinema I always, always get anxious. I don't know what it is. Every time I go in there I'm looking for the exits. Um, I feel anxious because for some reason just the, the fact that it's a very long time and you're in there in the dark and it's quite difficult to you know leave or move about when there's the people you know kind of locked in their chairs so I always always get anxious I never enjoy the film I'm always you know thinking all the time that something's going to go wrong or I'm going to be sick so I really really tried hard to imagine how really 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 trying hard um, about how I would want it to be. So I imagined really enjoying the film, uh, walking out, feeling just like I had a really good time and um, I went to go and see The Hobbit 3 and um, I'm a really, really big Lord of the Rings fan, The Hobbit fan. Um, you know, everything about that makes me feel um, powerful and it makes me feel positive, um, especially um, the songs and it just, it just, the whole, the whole experience of the Lord of the Rings just, you know, really invigorates me. So, going to see that, I really wanted to enjoy it. And um, there were times when I could feel, the, you know, the anxiety rising. And I really tried to control it. The inner voice was there. It was telling me, you know, to avoid things, to look through for the exits, to maybe, you know, I should have a break in the toilet. But I didn't let it get me. I really tried to control it. And um, to my surprise, it worked. I... You know, it happened about three or four times, and every time it happened, you know, I could feel it rising. I just tried to calm it down, and um, I just tried to enjoy the film, and not let any anxiety get to me. And I really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so much, I couldn't believe what happened, and I left feeling so powerful. So, um, it's just made me feel like the program is working, and my pessimistic thoughts are starting to uh, wither into more uh, positive thoughts. So um, now let's get on to what I've been reading uh, this week. So chapter 3 is about locus of control and this is a really really important chapter because it talks about people who have external locus of controls and internal locus of controls and what this is is it normally comes in a 3. So, external locus of control normally comes with a low self-esteem and social anxiety. Now, when Lucy told me that I had low self-esteem and social anxiety, I was like, no. But when I was thinking about it, I do. And I didn't even notice that I had it. So, I guess it all comes in threes. So, it's really important to understand what these types of... Um, what the difference is between ex external and internal. And at the moment, my locus of control is very external and I'm trying to build it into a more internal one. So it just it explains about that um, and how you kind of have to work uh, going back to a locus of control quiz and trying to change all of those limiting thoughts into something more positive. Um, it also talks about um, religion and how that's a very big affecting thing um, that could have um, an effect on the external locus, uh, which it does, especially for me, um, because I am, uh, I have been a Buddhist because I live in Thailand, and my mother is since I was a young girl, so because of that, it kind of controls my life, and um, I'm, I'm understanding more and more now how that is kind of being unhelpful to my emetophobia. So that also explains a lot in this chapter and um, the action really is to kind of reinforce the fact that you can do this, um, you are trying to build a more internal locus of control and the thing that I have posted on my wall, I can do this, I've got the skills to get through this, um, I can make this work, I've worked through it before and I can do it again, this is a molehill not a mountain so I say that all the time when I'm, when I'm feeling uh, stressed or when I feel like the anxiety is coming. And I always, always say to myself that I am creating this anxiety, it's happening, 
because I'm doing it, not because it's just happening to me. So that was chapter three. So now we move on to chapter four, and it's all about self-esteem. Now this is also really, really another really important chapter because self-esteem-wise, um, I am quite a positive person all around, but I didn't realise that I had such a low self-esteem. So there is a quiz, and of course I scored really low again, but that's okay because apparently Rob says in here that it's you know it's very normal for someone to have a high locus of control quiz and a low self-esteem. So it just talks about how self-esteem is built up by experiences that you have. Um, it's not something that is permanent. So whichever experience I have in the past two weeks, that's what I'm going to feel. If I feel good about myself, like today, I'll have a high self-esteem. But if I don't, then I'll have a low self-esteem. So it just explains how you can create, how you can build your own self-esteem in two weeks. And... Um, what it says, which is really, really important, is to kind of make a list, kind of write down, there's an exercise in here as well, which I've done, and um, I was telling Lucy actually that after I did it, I wanted to cry, because I didn't even know how good of a person I am, how thoughtful I am, I didn't even realise it, so I have built a very high self-esteem, well I feel like I have right now, um, it's getting there, but I do feel really good about myself right now, and um, one of the activities in here, the, the most important action is to process your positives. So I have a tablet here and what I do is I just write down um, all of the positives that I'm experiencing through the day and when I have time I will just go through them and um, have a look at them. So you know everybody has a phone, everybody has some kind of electronic device so like I've done here I've just written down um, oh, you probably can't see, but um, it looks blank. I don't know who it is. Yeah, so you can see I've just written down um, all of uh, the positives. So every time um, positive happens, um, I write it down and I look at it, and it just you know reinforces the fact that I do have um, a high self esteem and um, I'm a very good person. <laughs> so um, that's what I've been doing in chapter four, and uh, these two chapters have helped me a lot. I cannot even explain. Um, so yeah, let's move on to chapter 5, and this is social anxiety. Now, this is something that I struggle with because, um, obviously with social anxiety, with emetophobia, the only thing I'm scared about is, you know, being sick in public and everybody's going to be like, oh my god. Um, so that's something that I don't want to happen, it's just embarrassing and unpleasant. So there is a quiz and obviously, again, I scored very low in the, um, or I should say very high, in the social anxiety quiz. Um, I do have social anxiety and um, this whole chapter just explains about you know how we have to you know how it kind of coincides with the internal locus and also high self-esteem. So it's just to challenge yourself and to kind of say that I'm not doing this, this isn't happening to me, I'm doing this and I can stop it and that's something that I've always been saying to myself um, since chapter one. So um, I do actually have to go to a social event, um, it's the New Year's party at my workplace and um, obviously there's going to be drinking, that's kind of like a form of social pressure that I feel because I don't want to drink because I'm scared I'm going to be sick. Um, also, you know, being at a club, loads of people, um, just the whole atmosphere, it is, you know, the anxiety is going to be there. So I'm going to challenge myself to do that. Lucy has helped me so much in reinforcing the fact that um, I can overcome this, um, I can control it, and I'm going to feel really good about it, and I know I can do this, um, I'm pretty confident that I can do this, and um, I'm going to keep doing that, and I'll see you guys next week.